<laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, no pressure. There's no pressure. Yes. Um, um, but hi. Good morning. Um, so I'm going to tell you about I'm, – I'm, I'm the opening talk, and so I'm going to give you sort of a more, you know, bit of an overview, not so much about the details of what's going to come, but why memories and matter matter to me. And in the um, – uh, the idea is I think it'll matter to you if it matters to me, obviously. So, um, uh, so I'll tell you why it matter, you know, why they matter to me. Um, and, and mostly it's through examples, and yes, there are demos, you'll see. Um, but I'm going to start off just by telling you like a little story which has a happy ending, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say. And, um, uh, uh, that's my husband. Uh, and he woke me up at 4.30 in the morning about three or four months ago and said, I think I'm having a heart attack. And uh, so we went to the emergency room, and he was having a heart attack. And uh, so uh, uh, so I, if, if you all know this, I don't have to play the movie, but this is what happens if you have a heart attack, what they do. Okay, he wasn't acute. I mean, he was, he had a heartbeat and whatever, but then they could tell he had something. And so then they, what they do is they look around and they look for a blockage. And if there is a blockage, um, they put in uh, uh, what's called a stent. So he, this, this is like a one-minute movie of what they do. Percutaneous coronary intervention, also known as coronary angioplasty, opens narrowed coronary arteries. A small, hollow tube called a catheter is inserted into an artery in the groin or arm and threaded to the affected artery. A thin, flexible metal wire is then advanced through this tube and past the site of blockage in the artery. A second, smaller catheter is then inserted over the wire and threaded to the same artery. When it reaches the narrowed area, a small balloon on its tip is inflated to reopen the artery and flatten the blockage into the artery wall, while at the same time stretching the artery open to increase blood flow to the heart. Both catheters and the wire are then withdrawn. About 70 to 90 percent of coronary angioplasty includes placement of a stent a wire mesh tube that holds open weakened arteries. The stent may prevent re-narrowing after an artery is widened, and it stays in place permanently as the blood vessel lining heals over it. Okay, so that's the, um, the movie. Uh, and what I'm going to talk to you about is the material that they make stents out of. Okay, and it's, it's um, nickel titanium, uh, and it, it has a property called shape memory. Uh, so what you saw in the movie, right, is they have this catheter, and actually with my husband, they put it in through his arm, and they, you know, wind it through, and so the stent is completely, you know, little, you know, okay, and then they put it in, and then they, and when they blow it up, it has to be quite accurate in its shape, okay, and then you say, well, how, how can you make a material that you know exactly what the shape is? after you get it in there. You know, they said, oh, we blew up the balloon, okay, but it, it actually is a, a material that, uh, uh, this is called shape memory material, and it remembers its shape uh, quite accurately. Um, and so, this is the first example, and again, just because it affected me, oh, and by, by the way, you know, my husband had his stent put in, and he's doing great, and everything seems groovy, and, you know, we go to the gym, and we eat healthy, and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, but still, glad they have this material, obviously. Um, and so let me, let me tell you, uh, um, oh, oh, right, okay, so let me tell you a little bit how it works. Um, uh, and again, what happens is it's, well, actually, I'll just do this first, okay. Um, I'm going to pass these out. Uh, these are um, a little pieces of uh, uh, shape memory alloy, uh, the, again, nickel titanium. Please only take one because I don't have that many. I have enough for everybody, but not so many. Um, and it has the property uh, that it undergoes a fi Oh, I should give you one, Craig. Here, let me give Craig one so he can, he can do it too. Um, here, here. Okay. All right. and, and again, this one I don't expect you to see, but that is why I'm passing them out. Okay, the, um, uh, so it has the property that you can really bend it. Okay, so if you're thinking stent, you know, this is how they get it smashed in there, the fact that at, you know, if it's, not, if it's at 
relatively cool temperature, cooler than body temperature, you can really bend it. Well, actually, maybe we want to do it on, with a, on a camera. Okay. All right. So here's the camera. All right. And can you, here, I, actually, let me put it on this nice piece of white paper that I have right there. Okay. And uh, so this part you're not going to get to do because we couldn't figure out how to do the hair dryer. Um, but maybe during the break we can all get hot water because you can also, can also dip them in hot water. But I'm going to blow it. Um, hot air. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and, and what happens is as it warms up, it remembers the shape that it had before you... Only my hand's getting really hot. There. It remembers the shape that it had before. Okay? So again, what you can... Oh, don't... <laughs> no, you're only allowed to... All right, so let me explain the demos, okay? Um, you're only allowed to clap for the last demo because the last demo is actually the best demo. But that's it's, you're a theorist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. So, uh, no, I, am. I mean, I teach and I do demos, obviously. Um, but, but since demo is the most nerve-wracking one, but it's, it's the most amazing demo. Um, but we'll get there. Uh, so uh, let me show you a little bit about how it works. Okay. So at high temperature, which, again, in the, in the stent um, context is, you know, after it's in the body, um, it's in one phase, which is sort of a, you know, it's, this is a cartoon of the phase of, of, of the structure of the material, but it's sort of squarish, but then when you cool it, it deforms, and it can sort of either deform to the right or deform to the left, and, but the boundary between left and right, you know, can move around, and the fact that those boundaries between the moving to the left and moving to the right are, are, are pretty mobile, it's, that's the reason why it's like super deformable. But then when you heat it back up, um, you know, it goes back to the original phase and all those, all those boundaries go away and it's back to its original shape, okay? And so that's why they can put it in there and when they blow it up, they know exactly what shape it's going to have and it's, you know, and again, that's important for, you know, clearing out arter arteries and stuff. Um, but it has lots of other applications too. And I'll just mention one. And that is, um, some of you are um, ancient like me. Um, and uh, so I had braces. And I don't know, if you're my age, when you had braces, you had to go into the orthodontist and they tightened your braces. And, uh, and then, you, you know, they, then your teeth would go and then they tighten your braces some more. And, okay. and they don't do that anymore. My daughter had braces you know, a few years ago. And, uh, and they never tightened their braces. And the reason is because they now make braces out of shape memory material, so actually the same material. So actually you can more or less, like the, the shape memory is like perfectly safe because it's used for wires and braces. So like don't eat it because it'll poke a hole in your gut, but it's not poisonous. Um, okay, but, uh, but this is, cause, you know, because poor Lars, you know, it's like this is the institute for theoretical physics, and he's like really worried. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, so, th so, th so this is the wire in the brace, and that's the thing. It's made out of exactly the same metal that 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 I passed around. And oh, I forgot one demo. Oh, I can't forget all the demos. Sorry. This is this is the shape memory. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, okay, and so this is a little wire made out of shape memory material. And again, it's like super deformable. Oh, sorry, super deformable. And, but then, you know, in that box is a pot holder. Sorry. <coughs> Only I lost it. Okay, we'll just have, we'll have hot hands. Okay. All right. And now, again, I, but then, then again, at, at, at below... The phase transition, where, where it changes its structure, it's like super deformable like this. But now I'm going to heat it up. Are you good? Yes. Come on. And then it goes back and it remembers its original shape perfectly. Sorry. Again, I meant to do that before I told you about the braces. Sorry about that. Um, and again, after the talk, during the break, if you want to play with these, you're certainly welcome. 
Um, and I think we, we, we'll try to get some hot water, because again, you can dip it in hot water and it works too. It's just the temperature. But anyway, back to the braces. Um, what happens here is that this wire um, right here, okay, this is somebody with bad teeth um, that they're straightening. Uh, well, they're not bad, they're not straight. And then you can see, actually, you can deform this wire quite a lot. And this is actually, it's in the body, and it wants to be in the other phase, but the strain from the teeth is enough to, you know, it's super bendable, and, but it still exerts a force. And so they put the wire in, and it knows what it's supposed to do, like when the teeth are straight. And basically, you can use the same wire, and it just remembers the shape that it's supposed to have at the end of the process. And so it means braces, I mean, braces are not fun no matter what you do, but they're much less horrible than when I did them, because I don't know what it was like for you, but it was not fun for me. So that's why I wanted to mention the braces. Um, so that's just one example. And, and the thing is that what, we, what, we, what we're doing in this program here and what we do as physicists in our, you know, when we're doing the research is we're trying to find the materials that will be useful in the future. And one of the things is that, you know, you, you don't know what the use is going to be until you know what it is that it does. And so this exploration of finding what materials can do and how materials can have properties that you would never imagine is what makes it really interesting and fun. But there's also the idea that the memory can make them useful in a particular way. So that's why I wanted to do that example for you, okay? So now I'm going to change gears a little bit and just talk about, like, really amazing properties that materials can have. Um, and this was partly because, um, well, anyway, I just, I, I, part of it is just showing you things that I think are really neat, okay? And again, some of them have memories, some of them are sort of things that if we could make them have memories could make them interesting, but uh, just to give you some idea of, of the things that materials can do. Uh, so, so, so one of the things is that uh, when you think about a memory, the material is, you know, it's a, sort of like there's some imprint of what, what happened to it. And so this next example that I wanted to do was, was what's called a hydrogel. And uh, that's a thing you're not supposed to drink. They're over here. Uh, and, 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 but but it, it, don't worry about hydrogel. Uh, it's what's in disposable diapers, okay? And basically, it's, it's, the, it, it's a powder, and, uh, and it just absorbs lots and lots of water, okay? And, and, but you don't want to drink it because you'll get really thirsty and then if you drink too much water, you might explode. But I, that's, not a, that's not a scientific statement. Um, anyway, so, uh, so, so actually, w w we got some hydrogel and we have like a tiny little amount in all those cups and some water. Um, and, and I will tell you that, I'll tell you how it works, but it turns out distilled water is like, is better than regular water for this. But, I would say uh, the idea is that go over there, get a cup, and then there are some stirrers over there too in that box, and try see how much water you can add to what was just a teeny tiny. You look, oh, don't forget to look and see how much powder there was before you put the water in. Okay, so go on ahead and, and you can do that. Uh, Lars, you have to do it, <laughs> it's your job. I know you're a theorist, but <laughs> well, the trouble is, like when you do the water, we want to keep the water localized. Yeah, so so that's why we're yeah. So and there are cups of water too, and feel free, like you don't yeah. Once you get your cup, you can just grab a thing of water and add it. Let me get this question. So when I first came in the morning, there were tall cups in the back table? That, those are the water. That's just water. Okay, I drank that. So. Oh, you're okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's just that if you... The smaller if, cups? The smaller cups have a little bit of hydrogen. Oh, okay, so I, oh I, and I meant to... Shit, I meant to... Sorry. That's right. I meant to actually do the example. But here, you can do it. You're right here. I, guess I, I don't have a stir, okay, though. There's some powder in there. There's a little bit of powder, because I meant to do it myself. Okay, you can just pour it in there? Yeah, pour it in. Yeah. Oh, so, so it immediately becomes gel. Isn't that amazing? It is. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, well, I'll just hold on to it. So okay, does anyone want scissors? There's still, there's the scissors here. Just water, uh, okay, I'll just hold on to it. And I pour twice the amount of water. It looks like a gel of the same consistency. Unbelievable. And I'm pouring more water. Yeah, at some point, it runs out of gas. Incredible. So, uh, I teach chemistry about that. Yes. But do the tap water, is it the other ions get in the way of the absorption? That's exactly right. So the way it works is 
you know, it's filled with sodium right. and it's osmotic pressure, right? Yeah. And if you have other ions, it works less well. So actually what happened was I, to be honest, this isn't my field, but like I saw it, it's amazing. And I, and, you know, and I looked on the internet and they said, if you do this demo, you have to use distilled water. <laughs> and so then, and I, and I don't have a car here and I'm like lugging around distilled water and I'm like, this better be worth it. And I came in yesterday and I did it. It's, and it's like, it's, it's, look at that. Yeah, well, I know. It's incredible. It's, awesome. yeah. it's totally awesome. So it's like not exactly a memory, but it's such a great demo. Yeah, no, but I <laughs> just can, can, can we restore it back to its original state? The only way is to get the, the water out. So you have to heat it. Yeah. To evaporate the water. Yeah, to evaporate the water. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that, and actually, that's like the next thing is saying, oh, well, it's partly that you want to make it so that you can go back and have it, you know, it's a, it's like a, record of it, but it's not a switchable memory. Are you going to tell us how it gets its original memory? Uh, its original shape? Well, with the powder? With oh, the oh, oh, with the metal. The what? I wasn't planning on it, but I'll tell you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what, 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 what they do is it's like at a very high temperature, then sort of the atoms just move around and it's in the phase and then they can work it at high temperature. Then, there, then at much lower temperature is the second phase transition. So if you heat it between like the lowest, where it's called the um, the um, martensite phase. The martin is martensite is the really deformable thing, and it goes up into what's called the austenite phase. Um, and if you're not really high, it remembers. But then you heat it up yet more, and it becomes workable. So that's how. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. My father-in-law deals with steel. Yeah. And, and I have heard of Austinite as a. They change, it is. They, they temper steel. Yes, exactly. They, that's one of the. I don't remember where it comes in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's what makes steel strong. Is somehow. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. To be, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this. It was only because of my husband's heart attack that right, I know no, anything about this at all. But yeah, but it's, the, it's yeah. You, know, you think about, okay, how do you get a wire? My, my father-in-law had a clip procedure done. We had a, yeah. a leaky valve. Yeah. And the guy went into his femoral artery and literally clipped while the heart was beating some valve fingers yeah. and tested the pressure and then left and put the clip on. Yeah. And it's probably one of these kind of metals. Yes, it's how they do it. Yeah. And then boom, and he's alive. Is that amazing? Uh, yeah, okay, so at least you understand why I'm like, I gotta tell you about it. He, he seems totally fine. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, David is fine. Um, I don't think he's here this morning, but uh, he's around. Okay. He comes in every day. Okay. Did you get it to work? Yeah. That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you could probably even add more. Isn't that amazing yeah. stuff? Yes, it is. I wanted to ask you, oh, this means I don't have to wash dishes at home anymore because I'll lose my ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do they, how do they, what temperature do they put it at to initially form it? It's much higher, shape? it's much higher. Like 500 I think like, degrees? yeah, 400, four or 500, okay, I think. Okay, because, it. believe it or not, I saw one of these in probably 1950, maybe yeah. 60. Yeah. My uncle had one, and it was all scrambled up, and you'd heat it up, and it would turn into yeah. a little elephant or something. Yeah, yeah, so no. It's been around a right. long it's time. It's been around a long time. The medical applications are relatively new. Yeah. And it's sort of like, it was funny, because again, the material's been around. But then somebody had the idea of like this would be, you know what I mean? That's it's. You know, that's the thing I love about science. Is yeah. This, and art too. Yeah. You see the new thing and you think, why didn't I think of that? I yeah. would have never thought yeah. of some of the stuff people come up yeah. with, and that's amazing. Yeah. So. Anyway. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. We're fun okay. Here. Good. It's your fault. No, it's all right. No, I, I just tell Lars because he's like demos. What you know? And he's like, and he did have this. Will they all die? You know? <laughs> all right. Are you doing the photochromic beads also? I was going to. You why do you why? Because I didn't like Yeah, yeah, and you can see basically it's sort of a random walkthrough. Okay. All right. Did everybody do their hydrogel? All right. Okay, and again, I, there's nothing poisonous about it, you know, because we, not all of us, but many of us have had kids 
and it's in the diapers and you know if it was so poisonous we'd all be dead probably so if i get a place like california you could could store it in a a place and then dump it well but you would have to have a lot of yeah i mean i think the trick is if you want to get the water out again it's an eye oh wait we can do an experiment all right which is terrible but uh, according to the internet if we add salt, it'll collapse the gel. And I, what happened was, okay, so now see if, see if that collapses the gel. Of course you end up with salt water. Yeah, stir it up. This is like totally like terrible pedagogical practice. Because as you know, you should yeah, never do working. a thing you haven't practiced. No, it's working. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, just say, oh, we did it. Now it's practice. So now okay. Okay. So I actually have a little bit of salt, and if you add salt to that gel, it collapses and it goes back to being liquid. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about how the hydrogel works. Uh, and basically, it has um, well, you can see just from the name of it, sodium polyacrylate. It has basically mobile sodium in it. So when you add the water. What happens is that uh, the sodium goes out into the water, and then it wants it's, it has a there's an osmotic pressure that it wants to equalize the amount of sodium. So like the sodium gets replaced by water. That's the trick of the material. Uh, they, they, it's a chemistry to get the water in, and basically the water goes in until the um, uh, until the osmotic pressure is the same. The concentration of the sodium is the same in in the material and out in in the water. All right. And uh, so, so, uh, um, so anyway, I saw the demo. I just love it. And so I said I was going to do it. But then on the internet, it said first of all, if you use distilled water, it you get it can absorb much more. And so I did that for you, so so you could really see it work well. But then also, I have a little bit of salt, and if you add salt, then it it, goes, it becomes liquid again. Because again, then you then the osmotic pr- pressure becomes less because there are other ions available, and the water doesn't have to go in. Sorry, that was yes, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, why is, do you know why the surface is so rough? Do you know why the surface is so rough on the resultant gel? No, I don't. I don't either. I, I thought. Oh, you think the gel particles are just expanding? That makes a lot of sense. So they're crystals when they start. Yeah. Okay. All right, that and we can be. test that, but we're not going to do that yeah. right now. No, okay. I, but I, we can test that. We're, we're, well, you, what you would do, thank, uh, thank wait, you. Sid's the, is, is, so, you know, Sid would, so you can tell us if this is correct. We would image it. We, we would look at one particle and image it and then let it expand and see. And so we'll do that, not now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to tell you about another um, type of material. And again, this one actually, um, I'm not going to sh- uh, show you the memory first. I'll show you the memory second. Um, uh, this, this, the, these materials are essentially ubiquitous. These are, these are liquid crystals. Does everybody know about liquid crystals, or should I explain a little bit about them? Explain. explain. Okay. So um, li- liquid crystals, there are a lot of different kinds of liquid crystals, and... Um, Actually, I wasn't going to do this, but I will do this. Um, they're ubiquitous and they're extremely important commercially. Okay, and again, part of what I'm doing is to give you ideas about, you know, why we care about materials and the memories in materials. And so I'm, I'm, I am focusing a little bit on things that turned out to be important commercially. Um, so uh, depending on your phone, it may have a liquid crystal display, and uh, actually. Uh, uh, and so, and, and like TV, many TVs and computer screens have liquid crystal displays, and I'll, I'll put that down. I'll just say what a liquid crystal is first. So, a liquid crystal is a molecule, and they're not like super long, but they're not super short either. They like typically have like a hundred atoms in them, and uh, and they, but they're in the shape of rods. Okay. And depending on what you what what what's in you know on, you know what what the chemicals are it, it's car, you know carbon things and rings and stuff they have different interactions and sometimes they like to line up like this and there are liquid crystals that sort of like to form uh, spirals spiral phases and those liquid crystals are called cholesteric liquid crystals 
and basically they form spirals where again the, 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 the molecules themselves are quite short, like a hundred angstroms, you know, ten, you know, ten nanometers or so. But then they form these phases where they spiral spiral around and uh, and they form layers. And the layers tend to be can be, often are the ones that we like, are have wavelengths, the wavelength of, you know, between the layers tend to be about the wavelength of visible light. And so what happens is they can reflect visible light and, um, and, and, and they have some amazing properties and they have a lot of applications because of this. So that's why they're used in, one of the reasons why they're used in computer displays. But this is, it's, I'll, I'll pass this around. Uh, this is a temperature sensor, and again, it's made out of a cholesteric liquid crystal, and it forms these layers, but the, the, the spacing of the layers depends very sensitively on temperature. And so you can, you know, so if I put my finger, can you see it, or? Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, so I can even just put my finger on it, and you can see it changed its color. And I have a hair dryer. Oh, here it is. And I'm gonna blow the hair dryer on it. Come on. Uh oh. Oh, it's all green. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just so you know, when I, from my angle, I didn't see anything. <laughs> but it's like, but it, it turned green. But anyway, you can, um, well, after it cools off, you can put your finger on it. And, and again, it's, and that's again because it's doing this ordering that depends very sensitively on temperature, and that makes it a temperature sensor. Okay, you may have to let it cool off for it to do anything for you, but it will cool off, I promise. Um, so, uh, uh, and so, you know, and so, so, uh, so this is now going to be the first. Well, actually, no, this is going to be material that can be used as a sensor because, again, you, you you heat it up and it changes its color, but then you cool it back down and it changes its color back. But one of the things that people have worked on really pretty um, extensively for the last. Um, last you know 20 30 years is you know saying oh we've got something that can change its state and how can we turn it into a memory okay and um, so what this is oh I'll, I'll do this first and then I, I'm doing this out of order I apologize but then I'll show my movie um, you know so what this is is uh, this is made out of a cholesteric liquid crystal and it's called a boogie board. I don't know. I have you guys know what a boogie board? So now I'll tell you if do you, do you know how a boogie board board works? Good. Okay. So I can tell you something you don't know. So you can buy these at like Office Depot and Amazon and whatnot. And um and what it is is uh, you write on it. Okay. And uh, it has uh, the property that um uh, if you push harder it it makes a thicker line. And that's sort of nice. And, and then to erase it, you push this button right here. Okay. And, and then it's reversible. And it uses no energy at all unless you're erasing it. Okay. Um, and, and Okay, so I'll show my movie later. Hold on. Um, uh, let me show you how the boogie board works first. Sorry I'm doing this in the wrong order, but all these demos are just too much fun. Okay, so here's the boogie board. And again, you, if you want to erase it, you push the button, and, uh, and then you write on it. Okay. Um, so the way it works is it has cholesteric liquid crystal in it. But what I showed you before is if you just have the liquid crystal, it has like a certain way it wants to be as a fun at a temperature. But this, um, uh, in, in, in the boogie board, the, the, this liquid crystal is inside a polymer, and it's specially engineered so that actually it, the, um, the thing can line up either uh, with a... Oh, okay, so what you're supposed to see is it's... it's you know, again, this is a, artist, a terrible artist rendition of these <laughs> molecules are actually a spiral, sort of like a phone cord, okay? And so what you're, so what's happening is that the, this where it's like really thin is it's like into the board and then out of the board. So, you know, just so you know what you're looking at, right? So, so again, you're looking at the orientation of these molecules and it's doing this. Is that, is that clear? Because if you don't see that, it's, it's really, okay. Okay, so this thing, which is really narrow, yeah. that actually means that like the orientation of these molecules is going this way. So, so, so like in your mind, it's like a molecule which is doing this. Okay. Did that do it for everybody? Everyone sees it. If you, if you take a pen and you hold it up and you just slowly turn it as you're going up. That's it. Layer. Yes, that's exactly right. Do, does everyone have that? 
you know, because again, if, otherwise it's hopeless, right? You know, because you're like, what is this, right? Okay, but everyone understands what, what, what's happening in this picture. And this was the best one I found, I'm sorry to tell you. Um, okay, and so what happens is that th th this, this spiral can either orient, you know, parallel where, you know, um, like this, which is called the planar phase. And so what happens, and the separation between like this point and that point, you know, the, you know, the pitch, it's called the pitch, is, is, you know, roughly speaking half a micron, which is the wavelength of visible light. And so what you see is green because it's reflecting the green in visible light, okay? And so then it turns green. But then, uh, and what, and, 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 but then it's also, the, you know, engineered in a way where you could have this phase, and they're both stable at the same time. And that's the key thing. In this one, you see the pitch, it's going, you know, this way. And so when you, um, uh, when the light comes in, actually I have a little picture, uh, the light comes in, he, and what happens is it basically goes through and it has absorbing background in the, uh, underneath. Okay, and so then it looks black. And so you write on it but with pressure and that causes this phase to form and it's, and it's stable. It'll stay there and remember that you wrote on it until you hit the button when, uh, because of the electric field, it, you know, it pushes it into this phase and then you've erased it. Okay, and that's, the, that's how the boogie board works. Um, okay, and so, um, uh, and so, so I, I do have this, it's sort of, I, I, for some reason, I love this, I, this clip. You've probably seen this clip, but I... I'm sorry, I, we have no mid-size available at the you moment. You know this I don't understand, clip. I made a reservation. Do you have my reservation? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. <laughs> That's why you have the reservation. You know I know one. why we have reservations. I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> If you did, I'd have a car. <laughs> so you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. Anybody can just take them. <laughs> Let me uh, speak with my... Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you all remember this, but uh, that is like a, uh, I could tell you many things about my life where that has come in handy to have <laughs> seen that clip, but we won't go there. Um, but, but, okay, so up to now, what I've done is sort of like taking the reservation, I mean, so, so this is why I want to tell you the boogie board after, so I'm sorry I, I, I um, went out of order, but, um, but, but again, this thing that, you know, the encoding of the memory, like you, you, you do something to it and the material changes. That was the point of the hydrogel, okay? But, but on the other hand, there's the, oh, but you want to sort of be able to hold it and, you know, get the car and whatever. So there's sort of more to making a useful memory than just having something that changes depending on what you do to it. And, um, and so one thing, again, is, oops, I didn't mean to hit that button. Uh, okay, and so, so basically, again, with the hydrogel, we were able to, you know, say, oh, look, we've added water to it, it got bigger, but on the other hand, it's not really a useful memory because, you know, what you really want is this bi-stability where, you know, where we are now, you know, could be different and, you know, and, and you can reset it, okay? And so, so really it's nice to be able to erase and reuse the memory, but then a key thing is also just be able to read it out. Okay, so I, sorry about that. I, did I send, yeah, I sent the boogie board around. Um, and, uh, and it turns out in materials, a big deal is uh, reading it out, okay? And that actually is why um, one of the really interesting things about the workshop that we're having at KITP, um, because uh, we know many materials have the property that, um, the state they're in depends on what you did to it in the past, right? And, and, and we know, based on, you know, the, hopefully already what I showed you, that sometimes you can take materials like that and do really interesting, useful things with them. But what we don't know, in many, many cases, is we know what, what the material is doing depends on the past, but we don't know, like, A, how you would know. We know, we know somehow it does depend on the past, but you know, how do you read it out? How do you know what you did in the past and what information is retained and, and what good is it? Okay, and that has, in my mind, been a lot about what the 
workshop was about, is trying to figure out like, well, what information is retained and how can we get it out? So, so this is an example. Um, I will pass this one around so you, you should be able to see it. Um, uh, it again, it, it works a little better uh, you know, when you look at it, but hopefully you'll be able to see it. And this is one where, you know, I just have these beads and they look white, but here they, they turn out they're fluorescent, okay? And because they're fluorescent, if, oops, I, I, I should, you know, when I, when I shine ultraviolet light on them, you can see that actually they, you know, they have different colors, okay? And, um, and that's sort of what we're trying to do in the workshop is take situations like this where we know there's information in there, but we haven't figured out how to read it out. I mean, never mind what it's good for. But that's why I wanted to tell you about the memory metal right away because there, there are these applications that are clearly like you definitely wanted, you know, I definitely wanted my husband to have a stent that worked, right? And that was because of um, materials memory. So I gave you the last one. So um, you don't get one here. Okay. You asked the question, so I'm punishing you. No, that's a, I, that was a joke. He works here. He's, you know. All right. Okay. So um, uh, and so 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 part of it is understanding um, uh, what kind of med what kind of memories can be encoded, and and then part of it is understanding like what you can read out. Uh, wait, oh, here it is. All right. So, so part of it is that, you know, sort of figuring out what you can encode has to do in the memory context of, like, what structures you can sustain. So one thing that isn't down the main line of the program, but uh, I find a very, very interesting question and has been really important in soft matter, which is sort of the area which um, we're discussing here, um, um, generally is that if you can take you can take a material and change it in ways that don't look super important and it, it changes the properties a lot. So in this case I'm thinking about taking trying to like encode things in the shape. Oh and I have a picture. Uh, right. Oh that is not my you is it two? Yeah. Okay. So here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is what's going to happen: is that uh, you know you've seen sandcastles. I did something not very exciting here, but this is just dry sand, which you get at Toys R Us. At, at, wait, Toys R Us is gone. Um, at you Walmart, I guess. Walmart still exists, you know. And so the thing is that dry sand, you can't really build towers out of. You know, it just it, if you try to make something tall out of it, the, it you know, the sand just um, doesn't hold together, okay? But it turns out that you can take dry sand. Oh, I wanted to, oh, well, here it is. Yeah. Um, you can take it, and if you make the sand wet, you can build sand castles. And in fact, you can coat, and, but, the, and, but the problem with the sand castle is this thing about holding mm -hmm the reservation, right? Where if you build a sandcastle and the sand dries out, it will collapse. But this is this is some sand called kinetic sand. Again, you can buy it on the internet. Okay. And you can build a really pretty tall tower out of it. And what 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 the way this sand works, wait, that really looks bad, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll let you guys <laughs> play with it, and you can build what you want, okay? Um, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, this is a G-rated operation we run here. Um, okay, and, and that's one of the things that we study also is sort of like what, what you can do and changing the properties of the material a little bit will give you very, very different shapes, and you can remember things with the shapes. And um, now I'm going to sort of uh, give you just a little bit of sense of, you know, what the coming talks are. And actually, um, Ermgard's <coughs> talk is going to talk a lot about you change something that you think shouldn't matter, and the shape changes completely. Okay, and the you know what it looks like and what it's remembering changes with very small changes in the materials. And that's something we really don't understand at all is like what is important in all the different contexts in terms of like what determines the shape of what comes out. Okay, so you're going to hear more about that later. Okay, so um, 
Oh yeah, and I'm in, I, I, I'm in pretty good sense of time. So um, uh, and so now I'm I'm just getting oh, right. I have one more demo though, and this one's the best demo, but that's on the next slide. Okay, and so. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a sense of what the remaining talks are going to be. There are going to be four talks. Uh, and so Arvind and Zorana are going to uh, talk about um, how to design materials to encode memories that we want. Okay, and some of that has to do with structure of like putting together individual small particles to form structures that we decide what they are and that can be like different structures that you say, oh, I want this one, or I want that one, and to have like a completely general way of doing that. So that, that is interesting, I think. And, uh, and it's, a new, um, uh, it's a new technology because we're capable of doing that now because uh, they, they can, you have this tremendous selectivity because you can use actually DNA to hold the structures together and decide what is coupled to what. So I'm not going to tell you about it because they're going to tell you about it, but this idea of, you know, really designing the materials from scratch so that they encode the memory exactly that we want. So that's what they're, that's my view of what they're going to talk about. Um, but then the other thing, which is something which I, um, I work on myself, um, but um, uh, will be talked about by Imgard and, and Nathan, is uh, it's using dynamics of materials. And so everything I've told you more or less is sort of like, well, okay, we took the liquid crystal and we did something, and then it, it's sort of in a stable phase or a meta-stable phase. You know, it has some structure that 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 we want. You know, that we want, and, and 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 the material sort of holds on to it. But there's a whole other class of things that happen where you have materials where you drive them in some way. You could be heating them up, cooling them down, or you can be applying electric fields, and the dynamics of the motion uh, can, be, can be encoded. And that's what we've learned over the last several years is that the material remembers how it was driven. Okay. And you can read it out. And um, so Ermgard and, and Nathan will be talking about this, but I will show you, this is actually sort of an old demo. Um, oh, that's the hydrogel, sorry. Um, yo, oh, thanks, okay. I'm really nervous because this, this one's the best one, and um, uh, S S uh, Sid put it all together. Um, okay, so um, so so this is so. Oh, I should before I actually do the demo, I have to you know build up the suspense. Um, but also, it's like I'm nervous. You know, it's like uh, you know I'm doing the. Yeah. This is like I don't know if you saw, remember Oksana Bayul and whatever it was, the Olympics, where you know at the very end she did the whatever. So right, this is the very end. We're gonna do the best demo. Uh, so so what happens here is I'm going to take um, um, some fluid and it's gonna look like it's all mixed up, and that but it remembers perfectly what happened in the past. So we're gonna go backwards and it knows exactly what happened in the past. And again, it's gonna be not obvious it remembered what's in the past, but Hopefully, I won't screw it up, and um, you'll see that it remembers. Okay, so, all right, so first, I take a little bit of this, okay, and, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, I, sorry about this. It's dripping. Thanks. Okay, and then you put it in, okay. Okay, and then, and you see there's a line. There should, can you see the black line of, it's, it's graphite. Okay, uh, oh, then there's the top. Okay, and I'll try, the pressure. It's, um, okay. Okay, now it, this is the mixing part. Oh, there's a thing inside. So this is actually there's an outer there's an outer um, uh, column and an inner column. Okay, but the inner column's white. So the actual fluid is clear, but you're seeing the white of the inner column. Okay, and now here's the and and then it, it, yes, it looks totally mixed, and it's like 
Um, oh, and I have to see this because if I go too far, it's bad. Um, okay. Okay, now I'm going backwards. And if I didn't screw it up, oops, that's the thing. It goes back to where it started. There it is. There, okay. <sighs> oh, the pressure. All right. All right, and, and, and so, okay, so that was one, it's, it's, and again, this was known 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, but it turns out there are analogous things that Nathan will tell you about that we're sort of understanding that you know, when you do driven motions of materials, this is a fluid, it's material, oh, uh, yeah, it's actually this, the actual material is, is, is glycerin, which you can buy at CVS, so we did. Um, uh, and, and, and so it turns out that like in all sorts of situations when you're driving materials, that, the, the memory is in there, but it's only recently that we realized it's in there and that you could read it out. Okay, and so that is what uh, Ermgard and Nathan are going to talk about is a recent work on sort of encoding uh, memories in fluids and other dynamical um, uh, the other, you know, mat uh, other materials uh, that are being driven and flowing and are being, um, or uh, you know, undergoing some sort of dynamics. So um, that's so. Again, this was meant to be the introduction. I hope I gave you some sense of why we think this is interesting and important. Um, so first of all, understanding how memories can be encoded in materials does have technological importance. Uh, and that's why I was telling you about the, um, uh, the, the memory materials and e-writers. Um, and, and again, any e-writer, again, when you have it where, um, why, you, okay, many, many times you have um, sort of a memory where you need to keep applying voltage, right? But then the battery life goes down, and so this is why we like things where it can remember without having a voltage being applied to it. So that's why e-writers are, um, we think, going to be important things. Oh, and I didn't even talk about computer memories. So uh, that's a whole, separate, uh, a whole separate business. Probably a little less interesting from the point of view of fundamentals just because it's so well developed technologically, but obviously really important from the point of view of applications. Um, but, but again, from the point of view of why people at the KITP are interested, that understanding the memories better, we think will lead to you know, really new materials with really interesting properties. And then the hope is once you understand the really new materials with new properties that we can come up with really interesting and useful applications that you wouldn't have imagined before you had the materials available. And so we're working um, really to discover new ways because eventually it will be, we hope will be really uh, interesting and important. Um, okay, and I did, before I ended, want to talk about just people who helped with the demos and also with some of the, um, the background for this. And uh, so, uh, uh, I, and I will say that uh, Matt Stilwell, who's at University of Wisconsin, um, we have a material center where, like, so for instance, if you want to get some memory metal, probably if you, if, if you could write to me and I can write to Matt and we could probably get you some. Um, and so some of the demos are available and um, so you should write to me if, if you think uh, you want to do that because um, uh, if you think it will help your class, uh, we, can, we can try to do that for you. Uh, and then Robin Sellinger actually knows much, it was telling me about the liquid crystals uh, and uh, I think they're really very interesting. And, and of course Sid, and thank you for, Sid got that demo, which is, I, I just love. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> oh, right, question. Okay. Yeah, so questions, I'm on time, right? Of course you're on time. Okay, yeah. uh, so are there questions? I see a question. Uh, can that boogie board be transparent and then turn black? Or is that just one color? The way it's, okay, you heard the question, yes, because there's, a, okay. The way it's designed, it was the way I said where basically either um, it, it could change, okay, but now I'm making things up at some level, okay, I'm, I'm working backwards from the picture. 
the way it works now is it sort of reflects or else transmits, but I think the pro okay so uh, okay so so and again I'll just tell you what I think. Uh, if, if Robin's here, I'll make her answer, but she's not here, so good. I can just tell you what I think. Okay, I think the problem is that, okay, you understand that if, if it's lined up this way, it reflects, and you're like, oh, but if it's lined up this way, it'll go down to the bottom, and what if it just reflects instead of, um, instead of absorbed? And I think the problem with that is, so first of all, in principle, yes, it absolutely could do that, but I think in practice, they don't like to do it that way because the thing which I drew, which was like this, it's actually, it's, you know, it's inside this polymer, and what happens is that there's a fair amount of misorientation of the polymer, and then it would bounce back and forth a lot of times, and so you wouldn't get a nice clean, um, you know, you wouldn't get a clean thing in the other phase. So, so I drew it where it's like, either like this or like this, but in practice it's like this, you know, lined up, or else it's sort of this way, this way, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and so, it would probably work, but not very well because it's not really as ordered as I led you to believe. Well, they have glasses where they're transparent and then you turn on the switch and all of a sudden... Yes, absolutely. That's yeah, that's a little different because um, uh, here, what you're one of the thing that they were doing that was new was this thing where you, it, this phase and this phase were stable at the same time. You know what I mean? And so, and basically this phase in order to do that is not as ordered as it would be if you didn't have the polymer in there. But the polymer was stabilizing the fact that you could get both at the same time under the same conditions and have them both be stable, you know, basically forever. Because the idea is you're supposed to like put this up on your fridge and like you come back tomorrow and it's still there. And so they gave up a little bit on the, on the order of this phase in order to do that. Okay, so I think that's why they did what they did. Okay, but you're, you're right in principle, but I think in practice it works better the way they did it. So, yeah. But again, it's just what worked. Yeah. Next, Next question. Yeah. Um, so, uh, also about these crystals, um, could, can they, uh, do they circularly polarize light? Yeah, oh, I can do that. I can send this. So, so um, and again, I, I, to be honest, I had a demo to, um, to do that, but somehow when we tried it here, it didn't really work very well. We just didn't have, I don't know, it, I don't know why it didn't work. Probably the liquid crystal was old or something. But you can do this on your phone. So what happens, again, the, so, so it's because of this, you know, the cholesteric has a pitch. It, 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 you, it does polarize light. So if you put it through a polarizer, usually there's some orientation where it goes black. So I can do that. You can check your phone. I have a few. I, again, I'll want these back. These are, these are all borrowed, but here. You can try your phone and see. And, and again, uh, the, the most recent phones have what are called light emitting diodes as the way the display works. But anything that's not like super new and super expensive will be made with liquid crystal. So you can try it. But isn't, isn't that, aren't those linear polarizers or? Yeah, it still works somehow though. <laughs> well, I but think it, I know why. It's because what happens is that the, the way it works uh, is the standard display. Okay, so again, it does. This is different because, um, uh, you know, it, the, the, okay. So, so you anchor on this side, okay, and um, and then and then you anchor on this side, right? And if you if the uh, if the director rotates, it's a thin thing, so it just rotates a little, and then and then you go go through, and then but then you it, but you need a field to anchor. Okay, so it's actually. A, a, this is why I didn't go into it. It's a different mechanism. It's, it's a thinner display, and it has to do with the anchoring of the liquid crystal on the, um, on, on the glass pieces, right? Um, and so it is, these are linear polarizers, but the light does follow the pitch, you know, the orientation as it goes. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. It, it, it's, it's in a different regime is the thing, but liquid crystals do a lot of stuff, so. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, going with that. Yeah. Here, I'll do one. Just on as a as a total side kind uh -huh. of thing. My phone sometimes some years ago, I have uh -huh. polarized glasses and uh -huh. I couldn't read my phone when I put it on landscape. Yeah. It would yeah. just go black. Yeah. And so that that's that is that. Okay. Um, the um but, but again, this new move to the um, the LEDs. And also, if you go to Costco, which I don't know. 
Sid and I are big Costco fans. And so it was like, he's like, well, how many times have you been to Costco? And, you know, I've been three times, and it was the same amount. So we're tied, unless you went last night. I wanted to go last night. Oh, but he didn't go. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but if you go to Costco, you know, and they have the OLED TVs, that's, that's, those are organic LEDs. And so there what happens is that, you know, it's emitting the light of the color, where when you have the liquid crystal, what it does is the light has to come from somewhere else, and it either absorbs or doesn't absorb. Okay, or reflects. Okay, so so they're more efficient, and so that's why organic LEDs are on the latest phones. Uh, yeah. Actually, do you have a question? Oh, that was sorry. just a comment. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought. <you> could, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Adi. Um, so, if you were saying that right now we're having the goal is to design materials so they can encode the memory that we choose. Yeah. Um, am I to understand then that the kinetic sand that I've been playing with for a while, and the UV yeah. beads are really just a happy accident. Oh, so the thing. Okay, so let me. That's okay. So the thing about the beads, that's easy to explain. It they are like if you have a bead, it, they were really cheating. It's that I like. You know, basically what happened. There was a certain amount of. If I liked the demo, I I sort of you know found the aspect that was most relevant. The thing about the beads, though, is that they have. Um, they have they have molecules in them that absorb ultraviolet light and then emit, you know, different colors of visible light. Okay, and once it's there, that bead will always be the same color because the molecule that's in it um, uh, is the same molecule and emits it the same wavelength. But there is a certain amount of like, well, can you figure out a way of preparing it where you could take that same thing and, 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 and this is, the, you know, take the same thing and have it change its color and that color is then an indicator of what happened in the past. And so, so that's sort of the analog of like, what we're trying to do is to take those beads, which are doing what they're doing, and then figure out a way to make them like, encode more information by being able to emit at different wavelengths and be different colors depending on something that happened in the past. And that's sort of, uh, once you put it that way, you're like, well, what can you do? I don't know. And that's what turns it into a research problem right there. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I'm just curious. I imagine that if you took the sodium polycrylate and left it out in the sunlight for a few centuries, right, yes. eventually the water would evaporate. Yes. And I'm curious about how these materials forget. I mean, how, how do you lose the memory over time? What happens? Um, that's a great question. Um, so this, the, the other, uh, the, how do I say it? That material, again, this is the thing, the, the, the sodium, the, the acrylate, it either has water in it or it doesn't have water in it. And so in some sense, it's sort of limited in the information it can tell you. But, but I agree, you take, but you take the water out, it goes exactly to where it was before. So if we take this guy, okay, uh, and again, you'll hear more about it later. I was, again, my, my focus was really trying to get you some sense of like why these questions are interesting questions, even thinking about applications. But this one you could say, oh, well, I could put in a bunch of different things and I, uh, we could do it. Do you want to write, write your S for SID? Or is for it science, S for, for science? S for science, yeah. For science. Here, why don't you do it? Yeah, because, uh, but I, I, yeah, it was one of these, I, SID, SID, SID is like, the expert on this. But you can write much more in this, and that's sort of the question, right, of like some of the stuff I told you only, you know, it only remembers one thing. So like the boogie board for each pixel, it only remembers whether it had pressure or didn't have pressure. But how can we make it so that it's sort of um, uh, remembering more things at once? Uh, and that is um, one of the things, one thing that people worry about, including us, are, are things called associative memories. What if it's closed, but not quite? Here it goes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, no, I did it once. I'm like, you know, I'm retired. Yeah. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Yeah. And it, yeah. What could you do to make it forget? What could you do so that the smear is not treatable? Oh, 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 we did it. Um, <laughs> okay. So it turns out that if there are many, many things you can do, but it, you have to, you, okay, so part of it is the engineering of what it did is that this whole thing has to, um, if there's slippage, it doesn't work. 
if um, uh, and and it has to be like um, basically if if there's, if there's slippage it doesn't work. But then you have if you have a density gradient, it also can make it not work. And uh, what were all the things that so could make it not work? If you just wait. Oh right, and if you wait, then the molecules diffuse. Right, that's the big one. Okay, but but there are many things you can also do to screw it up. And actually, I um, in the slides I had like that YouTube thing just in case things went wrong. I could say, oh well, I screwed it up, but you can see it on YouTube. But I'm feeling really good right now. <laughs> um, yeah, but but the but the general question that you're asking is like we don't know, and that's why it's a interesting area to be thinking about because. It's sort of like you can frame the question, but you, you know, but sort of the way we answer it is always like, oh, we've got this system, and let's look at this particular system and see what it can remember, and can it do a lot of things? And we don't have a general theory, and sort of the goal of like what we were doing is to try to get a broader context for like how do you answer that question? And uh, I don't know how much progress we made, but we were work you know, we were working hard and drinking a lot of coffee while we were doing it. <laughs> Okay. And you could also just say that a lot of computers are read-only memory or, you know, yeah. write, and so yeah. that's the question, can you forget or not forget? Yeah, and, and, yeah. and what's your context and, you know, can, you know and, and what, how do you control it and what can you do? And that's, that's what we were trying to address. Uh, any um, connections to biological memory? Like, um, what, what was that movie about uh, unremembering? That uh, uh, Sid. No, not that one. Eternal, uh, Eternal, Eternal Sunshine. Sunshine. Bot Lose Mind. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the movie. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but uh, well, I, I, well, human memory, or you know. Um, yeah. Any well, any connections to? Uh, to that and what you're talking about? Well, I focused, well, this is partly your fault, right? I focused on the memories and materials. Yeah. He, wor he, he works here. Oh. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Used to. That's why I'm giving him a hard time. Well, yeah, yeah, he, he wor yeah, okay. But he was very involved in, like, the putting the program together. And I, I mean, the real answer is um, uh, we don't know. Okay. But some of, but, but like what Zoran is going to talk about uh, has some theoretic, theoretically very close relations to models of associative memory that were at least inspired by biological systems. But what we don't know is um, the degree to which the biological systems are the same or different, but the, but sort of simplified models that have certain aspects that are similar to biological memories certainly have played a role, and particularly on this designer end of things. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious about the material that was used in yeah. the braces. Yeah. Um, is uh, how is it set and how is it told to go back into okay. its? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I it's, yeah. Okay. I so thanks for the question. Maybe. No, thanks for the question. It's, it's and again, I always feel guilty because I sort of left. You know, you always sort of leave things out. I'm sure you do this to your students all the time, where you're trying to sort of tell them the right amount. And I, uh, anyway, I, it's clear I didn't tell you quite enough. So what happens is that. Um, uh, uh, there are sort of two, well, okay, so there's this martensite phase. That's the low temperature phase when you can really, you know, do anything to it. And then there's this austenite phase. And if, but the austenite phase goes for quite a while in temperature. And when you heat it up more to like 500 degrees, then you can sort of set it. Yeah, you set the memory at higher temperature. And it has to do with like dislocations move around at higher temperature. And so then you set the austenite at high temperature, but it's still solid, but it's just dislocations are moving and stuff. But then you work, it, you, you do the braces stuff at, you know, room, room temperature, body temperature. And so that's why it really remembers, because it was set at a much higher temperature that it doesn't see again. And so as the, the body temperature, is the thing that's keying it to go back to the memory? It's yes. Just naturally do 
Yes. And, but that depends on the material. So the thing about this nickel titanium, aside from the fact that it's like certified to be safe and all that stuff for um, uh, medical applications, is that by changing the alloy, you know, the amounts of everything in the alloy, um, you can change that phase transition temperature where it happens. And so then it can be made to be exactly what you want. And that was like one of the really important properties here. Okay. And so actually the, the application of braces is quite new. I mean, the shape memory alloys are sort of old, but, and then the stents were first, but then the braces are pretty new because you needed an alloy that was like just the right one. Yeah. I, we, yeah. I just had a question about I had a question about this demo here. Um, yeah. Um, maybe a very naive question, but um, as I observed it, we turned the thing in one direction and you turned it back, so we saw the S come back to its original yeah. state. So is there any analogy between this and just rigid body motion where you apply a force and then you apply a force in the opposite direction, you just come back to the original state? There is a really very... Um, straightforward analogy in the sense that the equations that describe the motion are much more complicated, but they are reversible. And so that's the thing. It's like if you can run the thing forwards and backwards and it's exactly the same, it'll go back to where it started. Okay. But it's not the same. I mean, it's not the same equations actually because this is a fluid, very viscous. So, I mean, we should probably give them some glycerin it's good for your complexion. That's why they sell it at CVS. And, uh, but it's super viscous, okay? And so, not super duper viscous, but it's quite viscous. So this is, this is a totally viscous system, whereas like Newton's laws, you know, or, you know they, if, if you have damping, they're not reversible. So it's a different set of equations, but they have the same property. And so the reason why it's happening is exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Do any of these transitions happen really fast? Do any of these transitions? Oh, the metallic ones. I'd ha to be honest, I don't know. But I'm sure I can find it on the internet. <laughs> um, probably they do, would be my guess, because the thing, uh, the, the, you know, so the reason why, I mean, this, these Martin Siddick transformations are, 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 are very well studied. And what, what's interesting about them is that it's basically there's the two phases, and to sort of get from bulk of one phase to bulk of the other phase, you'd have to move atoms like increasing distances. The atoms just don't line up. And that's why they form these domains. Okay, and so therefore it's, it, they're called displacive transitions because, you know, basically the atoms just can't move very far. So based on that, I would say they can happen quite fast because, again, nothing has to move very far in order to make that transition happen. But I don't know how fast. Okay, the, the liquid crystal transitions tend to be quite slow. That's actually one of the things that, that limits the applicability of the e-riders is the fact that switching them takes... Uh, relatively long time compared to computer memories. Piezoelectric piezo electrics can be fast because again they work with polarization and that that can happen fast. Do you consider that a memory uh, If they stay, it depends on the material, you know. So um, most piezoelectrics, though, they keep it with a field because I think what happens is that if, that if you get charge stuck to the ends, you're, you're sunk, you know what I mean? So they tend to work with like encoded with voltages applied just to keep them stable. But I think in principle they could be, um, they, 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 would, they would memorize, but in practice they tend not to be stable unless you put fields on them. Okay. But, but that's just my impression based on, uh, you know, actuators for AFM. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean? For the, the cases I know of, they tend to be controlled and not just sitting there. And again, that's what makes the boogie board sort of interesting is that it really is a stable, multi, you know, multi-stable system. Is there a break? If there are no further questions, but well, let's oh, thank Sue again okay. and have a break.